Our next caller is Roxy from North Dakota. What's up, Roxy? How can we help you? Hi. I just had a question about hip dips. Okay. Um, I recently started getting back into fitness in May, and as I started to lean out, I noticed some pretty big indents in the sides of my glutes. And when I started looking up um, like how to get rid of them, uh, a lot of the research said that they were either genetic or bone structure or not really possible to get rid of. So I was just wondering if there were any exercises I could do to reduce the appearance of them or if they are genetic or what I can do. Okay. Butt dimples. That's what I call them. Yeah. Sal's got cute ones. I got really nice ones. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Roxy, uh, great. I love this question uh, because it's going to allow us to kind of highlight a few things. Now, first off, I see in the question that you sent us that you're doing all the best butt building exercises. You're doing hip thrust, squats, deadlifts. Um, so you're doing the right kind of butt building exercises. Um, you started working out in May, so it hasn't been that long that you've been super consistent. Yeah. Do you know what your body fat percentage is sitting at? Could you, or can you give us like a rough estimate, do you think? I honestly have no idea. <laughs> okay. You look you look pretty lean from your from the video. I would I would say without looking at the rest of you, you're probably in a pretty lean athletic category, especially if you could see. So when you're talking about hip dip for people watching this, literally it's the sides, it's under the the like the hip bone, and it's kind of where when, as you get leaner, you'll see it kind of come in a little bit. Um, now I, I I think you might be a little. I, too critical of yourself, if I'm if I'm being quite honest with you, um, that definitely is an area. That, I mean, are there muscles you could develop there? Uh, kinda. Is it going to change it much? Not really. You're doing the best exercise. I'd say be a little bit patient. You can gain a little body fat, and sometimes that'll fill in. But you you also want to be careful that you don't analyze yourself in the mirror and start to pick yourself apart and and notice like little things that. You know, maybe to other people don't look like a problem at all. You might look very fit and healthy, but to you, if if you kind of go down this path, it'll be almost impossible to get out of. Well, I, I have a I have a couple. I mean, there's some things for sure. You, I saw that you are doing a lot of exercise, but I one I would ask, um, what does your rep ranges look like? How long have you been training in that in that rep range? And then also, are you tracking calories and have you gone on a bulk in in any time in the last you know three months since we've been trying to do this? Okay. Yeah. No, I haven't uh, gone on a bulk. I don't really track my calories. Um, and rep range, I usually do about eight to 10 um, and three or yeah, eight to 10, three times. Okay. And are you pretty consistent with that? Yeah. Okay. So here we go. I would love to see you lift in the five rep range and I would love to put you on a bulk. Because you got to remember, you're okay. trying to so and and the the side butt uh, is kind of what we're alluding to to get that kind of heart shaped ass right. So that give you that look on the side, and you're doing some of the best exercises. But if you're always in that rep range and you're in a calorie maintenance or a calorie deficit a lot of the time, you're not going to build. You're just not. You're gonna you're gonna continue to kind of burn and stay tight and stay firm and stay in the shape that you currently are. But if we want to build some muscle, build some shape, well, then we need a calorie surplus. And if you've also been training in that same 8 to 12 rep range for a really long time, your body's probably pretty adapted to that. So dropping you down to the 5 rep range and loading loading the bar more and then bumping your calories and then focusing on the exercise you're doing. I think you're doing great exercises, but I think it's important that you're phasing your rep ranges. And Are you following any of our MAPS programs? I am not. Okay. So I, I I mean we have a we have a, a butt builder bundle. So I would love to hook you up with that and have you follow that to a T because in the program we actually phase you in and out of rep ranges and the first phase is the low rep range that I'd want to transition you into right now. So I would transition you into that. I would ask you to bump your calories a little bit and then see what happens mm. from there. Now now Roxy, if if I were to talk to somebody that knows you very well and that cares about you, and if I if I ask them, do you think Roxy's a little bit too critical of her appearance? What would they? How would they answer me? For sure. Yeah. Like, yeah. I hear that a lot from my boyfriend. <laughs> yeah. So, and now, now sometimes we need to listen to the people that care about us the most, especially when it comes to how we judge ourselves, and especially when it comes to appearance especially when you're somebody that's into fitness because look I've experienced this you you literally do not see 
accurately uh, with your own eyes when you judge yourself, at least not the way you look at other people. I'm sure you look at other people and you say, well, that person looks great or whatever. Um, and then you look in the mirror and you start to really hyper criticize how you look. Don't go down this path. There's no way out. And you'll never get to the point where you look perfect if this is mm. the, the mental state that you're in. Adam has great advice. In fact, if you do what he's saying, focus on the strength. Don't focus on the mirror. That'll right. guide you in the right direction for sure. Have you ever worked out just focusing on getting stronger and watching you know, the, the amount of weight that you can lift uh, increase? Has that ever been a focus of yours? Has it always been aesthetic? Uh, no, I like seeing the numbers go up on the bar and everything okay, like that good. too. I just, yeah, recently lost the weight. So it's kind of been hard to not focus on the mirror so much. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. Time to bulk. Time yeah, to bulk. We'll definitely focus on that. You're, and just, you know, allow yourself, you know, that kind of freedom, uh, you know, to just go in there and just, uh, you know, really just keep it just specifically on how much weight uh, you're moving around and how much stronger you're going to get. You're, you're doing great exercises. I mean, you're on you obviously have done your homework and research on the movements that are going to give you give you this look that you're chasing. But it's just I mean, if you don't give the the body the the right amount of calories to to grow and build a butt, the butt's a, a muscle just like your biceps is or shoulders. It's mm -hmm. no different if a guy called me up and said, Adam, I have small shoulders, I want bigger shoulders. I assess his diet, and his diet is at maintenance or in a deficit. The the easiest thing I'd tell him is let's just increase your calories. But the challenge, especially for my female clients, is when I tell them this. They also want to stay as lean as they possibly are. And you just got to be okay with, hey, we're going to increase your calories. So we're going to put a few pounds on. Just trust the process. Mm -hmm. We can always reverse and go lean out again. But if the goal is to build a fuller, rounder butt. You got to feed then, your body. That's right. We got we to feed, the, feed it the calories it needs to build that muscle. And then if we you know, inevitably put a couple pounds of body fat on along the way, which is inevitable and not a big deal, and we reverse and go the other way, we're, we're going to lean out. Not to mention... In this process, you're going to speed your metabolism up. Yeah, and and the strength gains are objective, right? Your uh, your visual criticisms of how you look can be not objective, right? So that's why it's so it's such a great place to be when you're seeing just strength go up, and that's what you're focused on because you either get stronger or you don't. And I will say this: if you get stronger and you do it in a healthy way, uh, the what you what what shows in the mirror is going to change for the better, for sure. That'll happen automatically. Okay. All right, Roxy. Thanks for calling. Yeah, thank you. No problem. Man, that's a tough one. You know what? I, I feel what like she was I... a little disappointed in our answer. Was she a little dis <laughs> Can you tell, Doug? Did she have like a disappointed look on the answer? Um. Yeah. I, maybe I think she wanted uh, secret the secret, secret exercise. Yeah, like, yeah. some kind of <laughs> you weren't giving out magical the exercise. Sauce, I mean, there's, uh, we could. Go, I mean, I could add some things. Like I, I would love. So my my ass is on fire today. The whole thing because I did. I hadn't done a single leg dumbbell deadlifts in so long and just. You hit all the the stabilizer yeah, muscles around the hip, which are you're trying. She's trying to develop. So there's some exercises that we can include, but I, I think she's already. She and we. I guess we should tell the audience because the audience didn't hear. I mean, she's doing sumo deadlifts. She's doing barbell hip thrust. She's squatting. You know, so she's doing a lot of good movements. You know, lunging, Bulgarian split squats. These are all movements that are going to build and develop the butt. But this is a, this is an area that I, a lot of my female clients would struggle with, and that is. They want to build their butt and they also want to lean out. And those mm -hmm. are conflicting goals. Yeah, to lose yeah. body fat is catabolic and to build a butt is anabolic. So yeah. one of them needs a surplus of calories. And so you just got to, if you really care about building that butt more, you got to be okay with, hey, we're going to try and put some weight on right now. That's inevitably what's going on. Well, and then this is kind of like, I don't know, I guess it highlights a little bit of the trap of, of Instagram and, totally, you true. know, really just like com the comparison trap. It's the thief of joy, right? So you're always comparing yourself to what you see and you're not happy with what you have. And so like, I think it's important that, you know, Sal was kind of stressing that to her because, you know, and, and to be able to really, you know, get to the place you want, a lot of times you have to remove yourself from totally. it. Totally. No, there's, that's great, great balance to, for us to do. Cause I mean, there's two sides of this hundred percent Sal is right. And that we've got to be careful because that's the, the, the never ending goal. You'll always just right. like the guy who is, or girl who's chasing a, a certain amount of wealth and they realize that they yeah. just keep stretch. They just keep the, and you see this in bodybuilding a lot too. Yeah, I'm not I'm, big enough. Not yeah. big enough. Not big enough. You know, one of my favorite things about training clients for as long as I did, I would have clients that would be with me for ten years, fifteen years. And one thing I used to love doing is I would we would take pictures sometimes, right? So I'd have these old pictures from twelve years ago, 
And I would love to do this because I get clients. This is something we all struggle with. And my client would say something like, you know, oh, you know, oh man, I don't look good. I don't like the way, whatever. And I'd say, man, I remember when you used to say that to me 12 years ago. Yeah, and I'd when, pull out a picture. When you look like this. And they'd look at it and go, wow, I really thought I looked terrible. I looked yeah. great. And it's like, you could be objective because it was so long ago. So you get caught in this trap and fitness does not improve your life. It becomes uh, a detriment to you. So you sometimes you have to remove yourself. One of the best ways to do that is just focus on getting stronger. Now, that being said, you know, because that's the, there is also some things that could potentially be the main reason why she's not building her butt. Low calorie, mm -hmm. same rep range. Who, if she's been doing that for months yeah. or years, yeah, same, yeah. And she and these same exercises, same rep range, and and living in a calorie maintenance or deficit. I mean, you simply give her a few more calories, change up a couple exercises for the glutes, drop her rep range, yeah, drop and her she absolutely change the tempo. Yeah, you know, change she'll the focus. absolutely see some of that, some of that totally. butt grow.